Granta, a medley, by Lord Byron. O oh, could Lesage's demon's gift be realised at my desire, this night my trembling form he'd lift to place it on St Mary's spire. Then would unroofed old Granta's halls pedantic inmates full display, fellows who dream on lawns or stalls the price of venal votes to pay. Then would I view each rival white, pity and Palmerston survey, who canvass there with all their might against the next elective day. Low candidates and voters lie all lulled in sleep a goodly number, a race renowned for piety, whose conscience won't disturb their slumber. Lord H, indeed, may not demur, fellows are sage reflecting men. They know preferment can occur, but very seldom, now and then. They know the Chancellor has got some pretty livings in disposal. Each hopes that one may be his lot, and therefore smiles on his proposal. Now from this soporific scene, I'll turn mine eye as night grows later, to view unheeded and unseen the studious sons of Alma Mater. There in apartments small and damp, the candidate for college prizes, sits pouring by the midnight lamp, goes late to bed, yet early rises. He surely well deserves to gain them with all the honours of his college, who, striving hardly to obtain them, thus seek some profitable knowledge, who sacrifices hours of rest to scan precisely meters attic, or agitates his anxious breast in solving problems mathematic, who reads false quantities and seal, or puzzles o'er the deep triangle, deprived of many a wholesome meal, in barbarous Latin doomed to wrangle, renouncing every pleasing page from authors of historic use, preferring to the lettered sage the square of the hypotenuse. Still harmless are these occupations that hurt none but the hapless student, compared with other recreations, which brings together the imprudent, whose daring revels shock the sight when vice and infamy combine, when drunkenness and dice invite, as every sense is steeped in wine. Not so the Methodistic crew, who plans on reformation lay, in humble attitude they sue, and for the sins of others pray. Forgetting that their pride of spirit, their exultation in their trial, detracts most largely from the merit of all their boasted self-denial. Tis morn, from these I turn my sight, what scene is this which meets my eye? A numerous crowd, arrayed in white, across the green in numbers fly. Loud rings in air the chapel bell. Tis hushed. What sounds are these I hear? The organ's soft celestial swell rolls deeply on the listening ear. To this is joined the sacred song, the royal minstrel's hallowed strain. Though he who hears the music long will never wish to hear again. Our choir would scarcely be excused, even as a band of raw beginners. All mercy now must be refused to such a set of croaking sinners. If David, when his tiles were ended, had heard these blockheads sing before him, to us his psalms had ne'er descended, in furious mood he would have torn them. The luckless Israelites, when taken by some inhuman tyrant's order, were asked to sing by joy forsaken on Babylonian river's border. Or oh, had they sung in notes like these, inspired by stratagem or fear, they might have set their hearts at ease. The devil a soul has stayed to hear. But if I scribble longer now, the juice a soul will stay to read. My pen is blunt, my ink is low. It is almost time to stop indeed. Therefore farewell, old Grant aspires. No more like Cleophas I fly. No more thy theme my muse inspires. The reader's tired, and so am I.